Ohio Governor Mike DeWine has vetoed a bill that would have banned transgender student athletes from competing in female sports, as well as prevented doctors from prescribing hormones, puberty blockers, or gender reassignment surgery before patients turn 18. DeWine claimed the law would have put government in charge of health care decisions instead of their parents. Here's DeWine. Were I to sign House Bill 68, or were House Bill 68 to become law, Ohio would be saying that the state, that the government, knows better what is medically best for a child than the two people who love that child the most, the parents. Gender critical commentators were quick to express their outrage. Former female athlete Riley Gaines posted on X, Governor Mike DeWine has vetoed HB 68, a bill that would protect women's sports and prevent child mutilation. Fortunately, Ohio has the votes to override the veto. Governor Mike DeWine is a spineless coward that needs to be removed from office. Detransitioner Chloe Cole posted Governor DeWine's political career is over. What a way to go out, paid off by the medical lobby, which is insanely powerful in Ohio. Remember him for his desire to sterilize and mutilate children. So, Jessica, what do you think of Governor DeWine, a Republican, making the decision to veto this bill? I think it, it makes sense. I think the restriction in the case of transgender athletes participating in sports should just be that they must undergo at least two years of hormone therapy before participating if it is, you know, a, a woman to man transition or sorry, a man to a woman transition and they want to participate in women's sports. We see that that their advantage when it comes to running is completely diminished after two years. And then performance of different measures like sit-ups is diminished after three years. So if you want to, you know, make the metric for running track and field two years make sense. If you want to do all other sports, you know, at three years, I think that makes sense. I think there's a, a way to deal with this without a complete ban. So it's not surprising to me that, you know, a Republican vetoed this. I can see the next steps being what should the restriction be? Is this something decided by the boards of education? Is it something decided by the state legislator? But it makes sense to not just have an all out ban. Yeah, I guess my problem with that is that there are also studies that have been published by the NIH that say that there are other aspects to transgender athletes that allow them to retain an advantage, whether on strength or speed, because even if they are taking testosterone suppressant medication, they still have developed more muscle mass, they have longer wingspans, larger feet, larger hands, all of the things that might come along with going through puberty as a male that do in fact allow them to uh, have a biological advantage over a woman in sports. I mean, it, it, and it, even just looking at prior to transition, the record holders in the Olympics, for example, if you compare a man and a woman in the same sport, the man's time is always faster or his throw is always further. Um, so I, I, to me, having just a restriction on it is not enough to get rid of that competitive advantage just based on the research that we have available based on uh, post-transition individuals. Yeah, I mean, to have the, the, the performance for running diminished after two years and then you know, after three years, the other strength testing, they do the, the push-up performance test. I, I really think that that's, you know, something completely different from if someone were to go through hormone therapy b before puberty. There are cases where they, they take puberty blockers, and then when it comes time that they're ready to transition, they can go through hormone therapy b before puberty. So they never go through through puberty as a man. And so there's a, a lot of developing medical research, and it, it sounds like there are conflicting cases. And I don't know how much I would trust, you know, the researcher setting. I haven't read it, you know, based on statistical significance, considering the number of transgender people in the United States is so incredibly low, under 2%. And so we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, examples, cases, uh, people to study and doing randomized control trials on this sort of thing is, is near impossible because it's really a personal decision as to whether or not someone decides to transition. And, you know, the pool of people uh, that decides to become an athlete and, and likes athletics well enough to go through the process of doing this kind of clinical trial, taking the hormone therapy while still being an athlete. You know, it's a lot of pressure. I can imagine perhaps the sampling bias 
of the people willing to participate in the study being some of the best and most passionate athletes. And that could bias the results as well. There's all sorts of things. So I think we, we've got to wait some more time before the research is fully reliable. But it seems to me that, you know, they could make the restriction if, as you said, they start taking the hormone therapy before puberty. Um so that they never do go through puberty as a man. I just don't think an all-out ban makes sense right now uh, when so much is changing. It seems to me that this needs to be, you know, a decision uh, that is made and then changed policy-wise. Yeah, I'd like to see more research as well, but I think I would err on the opposite side of exercising caution in terms of the fairness and safety of women in sports and have the all-out ban until there is research that would prove that being on these hormones for a certain period of time would diminish all of the athletic advantage. Um, the study that I'm referring to is one where they looked at transitioners that are actually in the United States Air Force, and they only went a year after, not two years, so I, I'm not sure about uh, what you're citing, but the one-year advantage for uh, run times was still 9% of the men who had transitioned to women. But I wanted to get into this question about child transitions as well, because this is obviously completely intertwined with the question of women's sports when we're looking at an elementary and middle school level. Um, I guess my objection to the idea of getting people on puberty blockers before they go through puberty and then continuing them through on hormone therapy and perhaps surgical changes later on is that a vast majority of children who suffer from gender dysphoria end up growing out of those feelings by the time they reach adulthood. And so the fear and the concern is that you're putting a kid through a permanent body altering change. Um, puberty blockers, if you're on them for long enough, are, are not reversible and lead to the failure of development of secondary sex characteristics. So you're putting them through a permanent body altering change without one, I think the proper ability to consent, a lot of children don't really know who they are or who they wanna be when they're at the ages that they're being put on these blockers and two, end up growing out of it and then can't go back, they can't get back time. That's the objection of people like Chloe Cole, for example, who um, went through these treatments when they were children and then ended up becoming known as detransitioners because of their, uh, their, their changing mind on, on whether or not they actually wanted to be a member of the opposite sex. So I just w would be curious to hear your response on some of the data surrounding these gender affirming treatments for children. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's true. There are many people who transition, detransition. I know someone who, who detransitioned. I, I think that's why it should be a decision made between, you know, the child, their parent, and their doctor. It's it's to me a parenting decision because if you have a, a child, let's say you know you have a child who is a male, they would like to transition to become a female. If they go through puberty as a male, that also is something that will permanently change their anatomy, permanently change their body, permanently but change. It, but their that's the natural. Gender. But that's the the natural function of the human body. I think there's a, a difference between allowing them to have their body go through its natural process of aging and growing versus artificially suppressing that natural process. I think the latter requires uh, a much higher standard for proving that it could be beneficial, right? I don't have any problem with, you know, anyone seeking medical help, taking medications, making changes, you know, to their bodies with plastic surgery, if that's what they want to do, you know, that's their decision. Uh, just because it's not what the course of nature would do doesn't mean it's, you know, unethical in my eyes. You know, that's why we have so much medical technology to improve human life, to make us live longer, healthier and happier. And so if I was a parent of a transgender child, it would have to be a, a conversation. You know, are you certain this is what you want? Because if, if we don't act before puberty, then their body would be permanently changed in a sex they don't identify with through the puberty process. So I think, you know, it's an impossible decision. It's a really difficult one because down the line, sure, they might change their mind. But many people make decisions that change their lives permanently, especially parents making decisions for their children's for their children that ultimately maybe the, the child wasn't happy with that and would have liked their life to go in a different direction. That's something you, you handle afterwards. I just don't think the government, you know, should be able to ban any child or parent from, you know, taking hormones if that's what they want to do. Yeah, I guess my perspective on it would be that 
in terms of any decision that a parent makes on behalf of their child and whether or not it should be legal, especially with medical treatments, is that you would have to prove that the benefits of the treatment outweigh the harm. And based on the research that we have available now and the fact that in the UK they're actually drawing back on the way that they care for children with gender dysphoria because of a lack of evidence that these treatments actually reduce things like suicidal ideation, anxiety, depression, et cetera, and even uh, the ability to for these children to feel like they are in the quote-unquote right body. Um, to me, the evidence leans on the side of these being more harmful than not, and so that's why I would support a ban. Next time on Rising, Robbie and Bree will be back for the first episode of 2024. We'll see you all in the new year. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. For those of you who like to listen on the go, we are available wherever you listen to podcasts. Bye, y'all.